Hello everyone, welcome to Alicia at Home. I am Alicia, and if you are new here, welcome. It is so nice to meet you. If you are returning, it's good to see you again. I am looking forward to today's video. I've got something really fun up my sleeve for us to work on today. So let's get to it. Today we are going to be DIYing some tiered trays. I have a party coming up where I'm going to be entertaining several guests and so I needed some tear trays for serving that would, you know, stack to take up a little less room on my countertop. And I went shopping, I went looking for some and I just could not find what I was looking for. So then I came home and I thought, oh, Alicia, you can DIY these. So that is exactly what we are going to do today. We are just going to quickly whip up some DIY tiered trays. Our first tiered tray that we're going to work on is going to be a fairly large square tray. And I asked Michael if he would help me and of course he said yes, because he's just the sweetest and the bestest like that. <laughs> so the first thing that we did was cut out some square pieces out of just some fairly thin plywood and then Michael cut out some framing pieces so that we could frame these out to just give them that nice finished look. So here he is just assembling that framework by attaching them with wood glue and some finish nails. And part of the reason I wanted this to be framed out was so I wanted them to have, you know, just that little tray look because I am going to use these to serve some food. So Michael is just going to finish assembling these and then we will sand them, give them a nice good sanding so that they're really nice and smooth and then I'll take them into the shop and paint them. Okay, so when y'all are DIYing your projects, do you just absolutely hate sanding as much as I do? <laughs> I am so thankful that Michael was so willing to do this for me because I'm pretty sure he doesn't particularly enjoy sanding either. He is a true sweetheart, definitely a keeper. <laughs> okay, so now we are back in the studio and we've got all of our pieces assembled and put together and I'm going to separate these trays with some old banisters that we had and these were from a previous project and they were already painted gray but I'm gonna paint everything white here so I but I like that these were painted gray because I'm gonna when I distress them that gray will show through and I really like that so I'm just going to use screws to assemble the banister pieces and some wood glue here and of course I will also use my Ryobi screw gun or drill motor, whatever you call those. <laughs> I'm not even sure. And so I've gone ahead and mixed up some, just some food safe primer here because I wanted to seal this wood really, really well because like I said, I am going to be using these to for food service. So I'm using this primer to prime the whole surface all the way around this front, back, all the sides, all the edges. And I'm going to do that to both trays. So while we are waiting for the um, primer on my trays to dry, let's move on to painting our little banister pieces here. And these are the pieces that we're gonna use to you know, stack the trays and, and separate them so that they become an actual tiered tray. And I am just using some white chalk paint here. I believe this is Waverly brand. It did take two coats of paint too for me to completely cover these because that gray paint underneath did show through after the first coat. So I went ahead and did a second coat on these. After the paint was completely dry on these little banister pieces, I did go over this with my little sanding file here and to just distress the edges and just, I did a little bit of distressing in the centers here as well. I, um, I really liked the distressed look on these. I know distressing is done on almost everything I do, but there's just something about the distressing that I really like. Are you guys 
Do, do you like to distress your projects or just leave them super clean looking? Let me know. I would love to hear your thoughts on the whole distressing thing. <laughs> but anyway, this is how it turned out, how the banister pieces came out. And now I've gone ahead and painted the trays after that primer dried, I went ahead and painted these trays with some white paint also, let that dry really well, and now I'm going to distress these also. Now that we have finished all of the distressing, I'm going to give these a really good cleaning because they were covered in all that sanding dust. And I want to seal these, so they need to be really, really clean before I add the sealer. And I just sealed these with some food grade mineral oil to make them safe and non-toxic so that you know they're safe to serve food on. So here is how everything is looking so far. I'm really liking the way this, the distressing on these turned out. I just kind of like that, you know, aged found look to these. So now we can move on to the fun part of assembling. So I'm just going to add some wood glue to the bottom of our banister piece here. And I did pre-drill all of my parts and pieces before beforehand. I just did that off camera because I didn't think you guys really wanted to watch me pre-drill everything. Then I started the screw on the bottom of this so I could just make sure I got that set correctly and positioned in the right place. And then I will go ahead and attach it with this screw. And I did use some pretty long screws here so that I can make sure it was really well attached and held together. So I didn't screw this in super tight so that I could be sure and position that correctly. And then once I got it positioned, I do go in and tighten up that screw. And of course, once I did that part, some of the um, excess glue sort of squeezed out. So I'm just going to clean that up here really quickly. So to attach our top tray to this banister piece that's connected to the bottom tray, I'm going to use one of these weird double-sided screws here. And I don't actually know what they're called, just double-sided screws. <laughs> and Michael's going to help me um, put that in. He's just helping me here and he's using his little plier things to screw that in. And then we will place that top tray onto this and then you'll see how the double-sided screw comes into play because once the top tray is um, screwed on, then we still have a screw on the top for our finial and that way there's no screws that actually show through. And I think Michael might be having a little too much fun here. <laughs> boys will be boys, right? <laughs> And after Michael was finished playing, he went ahead and attached this finial to the top. And I really like how this finial just kind of gave it that nice, clean, finished look on the top of this tray. Next, we're gonna add some feet to our little tray here. And I have these cute little metal trays that I got on, or metal trays, not trays, metal feet that I've got on Amazon. And I will link those down below for y'all in the description box. So Michael just marked out where all the feet need to be positioned. And then he went ahead and pre-drilled all of the holes. And then we will go ahead and attach our feet to all the way around. So we have four of these. So we'll attach it to all four sides of the tray. And then y'all, I think this tray is gonna be all done. So excited. I really like how the feet turned out, y'all. I think it finished off this tray very nicely. Our next tray is going to be a three, three tiered, just gonna have three trays on it. And I found these nesting trays on Amazon and I will also link those in the description box for y'all if you are interested in recreating these trays for yourself. So Michael is so sweet in helping me find center. Finding center on circle things is really hard for me. I don't, I don't understand the math. I'm just not very good at math. So I'm super thankful that Michael has those mad math skills for me. So he's just marking the center on each and every one of these so that we can go ahead and get them pre-drilled.
we are also going to use some parts of a banister that we got at Lowe's as the divider pieces um, that divide each section of this tiered tray. So we are just going to go ahead and cut each one of these using just the section of the banister that we wanted to use. After we cut them out, I was kind of like, oh, these kind of look like little chess pieces. <laughs> anyway, so we got those cut out and now Michael is just going to get the centers marked for each and each one of these pieces so that we can take them over to the drill press and pre-drill the holes in these for the screws so that we can get them attached to the trays. So now we will go ahead and pre-drill all of our holes for our um, screw pieces. And again, on these, we're gonna use those double-sided screws. So Michael's just doing this for me. And I think it's because he just likes to use all his big boy toys. But if you do not have a drill press, you can use a handheld drill to do this as well. It'll work exactly the same. <laughs> Then we move on to painting all of our pieces, and I am just using some black craft paint here to paint these. I am applying this black paint really heavy and pretty messily because after I get it all on, I'm going to take a wet towel and do some wet distressing on this. And the wet distressing just kind of gives it that subtle, um, stained look like you can just subtly see the wood grain kind of come through and then after the black paint completely dries on these I am going to go over them with a little bit of antiquing glaze and I'm using this antiquing glaze just to kind of enhance that black underneath and I also am using it because the tiered trays that I bought were pre-painted and I feel like the antiquing glaze over the top of the black just really enhances that black color and better matches it to the existing color on my trays. I did let that antiquing glaze set up just a little bit and then kind of wiped off all of the excess. And then I'm going to take my little sanding um, file here and give it just a little tiny bit of distressing. Next up, we're gonna move on to assembling these. So we first attached this, this first banister piece to the very bottom tray for underneath, but just using a regular screw. And then once that's attached to that bottom tray, we use these double-sided screws so that we can attach the middle tray to this piece. And then we'll do the same exact step to attach that very top top piece and again michael just has fun spinning these around it is kind of fun to watch them spin around and then just kind of attach themselves to that screw or tighten themselves to the screw <laughs> you got you got to have a little bit of fun doing these projects right <laughs> And here we're just attaching that banister piece that we're using as our divider pieces to that double-sided screw. Then we'll put another double-sided screw into this piece so we can screw the very top tray on and then put our finishing piece on that will sort of act as our little finial topper. To the top of that little final finial piece we're just going to add this little wood ring to just kind of give it a little extra something something just elevate it a little bit and we're using some wood glue and hot glue here and the hot glue we just use as an instant hold while we're waiting for the wood glue to set up and just like that voila we have a really cool tiered tray what do y'all think of this one i kind of like it Well, for throwing 
pulling these trays together rather quickly, I feel like they came out pretty good. I actually think they're going to serve the purpose that I needed them for. So I'm looking forward to just putting them all together and you know, getting all of my party stuff put together. So if you guys wanna come along with me while I do that, feel free to join. to wrap up our projects for today. I enjoyed hanging out with you guys. It was so much fun. I look forward to seeing you next week. I've got something super fun planned. I think you guys are going to enjoy this. So I will see you next week. Until then, y'all take care and I will see you soon. Bye.